All right, welcome back. Let's take a look at page three, page three. Okay, this is actually a pretty important question. At least your math teachers kind of think so, is we're looking for a variety of things. For, for starters, um, you'll notice that this X right here and uh, this Y right here are the two values that we're looking for. And we're really trying to emphasize a couple of pieces. Now we've got a lot of options. And so when you take your test or when you're working on something for college or whatever you're gonna do, it's always good to look at things through a variety of lenses. Now we have this thing called the side splitter theorem. And that actually says that if you, whoops, I forgot, I did not share my screen. Let's look at that again. Let's try that again. The side splitter allows me to kind of split the sides in the following way, that I could actually say that the ratio of X is to 16, the top is to the bottom. Now keep in mind that's the top triangle is to the bottom triangle, as the top piece is to the bottom piece. Now, if you're, if you get lucky, and this is one of those cases, you could notice that we could cross multiply and know that that's 9 times 16, and you get 144, uh, and you divide 144 by 8, and you get 18. But you know what? I've noticed some of you guys are really good at this, and you already see that, you know what? If this side is twice as big as that piece of a side, then this has to be twice as big. We could have seen it just by looking at it and not work so hard. We could have also done something a little more aggressive. We could have said, this is the old way before we had side splitter. I could say the top side is to the bottom side as the top side nine plus X is to the bottom side. Now I know that that is actually gonna be a little bit harder mathematics. That's gonna be 144 plus 16 X. But as soon as you subtract 16 X from both sides, you're gonna get eight X equals 144, which we've already seen right here. So again, looking at it through a variety of lenses is not a bad idea just to make sure you're good. But when you come to looking at Y right here, your options are much more diminished because Y is gonna to have to be compared to 72. And since y is actually an entire side length of a triangle, as is 7.2, we're going to have to use entire side lengths to compare all the way throughout. I can never use these little pieces, this 9 or this 8. Those aren't going to be able to be utilized directly. So to find y, I would say 7.2 over y, the little piece over the big one, the little side over the big side, equals the little side over the big side. That's how I would do it. Little triangle over big triangle equals little triangle over big triangle. And keep in mind that you can go ahead and cross multiply early and just go for it. Or if you just take a second and reduce, sometimes the mathematics gets a little bit prettier. So I'm gonna cross multiply, which gives me 21.6, three times 7.2, is 2y. And that gave me that y is 21.6 divided by 2. Okay, that should be 10.8, uh, and we are good to go. 10.8. Sorry, I wrote that very sloppy. All right. Now, letter B, very, very similar idea. Uh, again, I'm going to go a little bit quicker this time because uh, I'll use what we talked about here. I notice that this piece is exactly one third the size of the other one. So X is going to be whatever 32 is divided by three. I could do some hard work, but why would I if I can see that ratio? And then we'll just do one more again. If I'm going to compare Y, I'm going to compare Y to 22 because those are in the same place. Little triangle over big. So when I looked at it, I looked at little triangle, which is 30, over big triangle, which is 30 plus 10 or 40. And as I mentioned before, whenever you can reduce fractions, it's always smart to do so just to make life a little bit easier. And I end up with 4y is 66. And of course, 66 divided by 4 is 16 and a half. And I know that that makes people nervous if everything isn't perfect every time, nice, easy decimals, but that's pretty nice. All right, number 12. I'm kind of rushing because I got in here a little late to work and I want to get this done before class starts. I've got W is 1, 3. Here we go. There's W. I've got X is 2, 5. 
I got y is 6, 3, 1, 2, 3. And z is 5, 1. Now, I've noticed a lot of you will do these things, but you won't necessarily label things nicely. And I think it's really helpful if you label. Now, what should jump at us almost immediately is we should think this is most likely going to be a rectangle because it sure looks like one if you draw it nice. But we want to actually go ahead and prove that. So here's how I'm going to prove that. When I look at the distance from z to y, notice it went up to and over 1. So the slope of this line, m, would be rise to and run 1. <laughs> Which is also true over here. This slope is rise to run 1. That's 2 over 1. Now, if we look at these guys over here, to go from W to Z, I go down 1, 2, and over 1, 2, 3, 4. So if this slope is down 2 over 4, I could reduce that to 1 half. And you're going to notice that the same exact slope happens there. So the two slopes that we get is that the slope of XY is the same as the slope of, uh, say, WZ. And both of those are negative 1 half. But the slope of xw is the same as the slope m of yz, and those are both 2. And what you'll notice is that is definitely a rectangle because the slopes are opposite and reciprocal. So that establishes that it has to be a rectangle because all of these angles, because of their slopes, have to be 90. And of course, the last little piece is we could establish that it is definitely not a square because if it rises 1 and runs 2, you could say that 1 squared plus 2 squared, that would be the distance here, square rooted. But that would not be the same as this distance here because it drops two and then runs four. Those are bigger numbers, aren't they? So if we if we did the Pythagorean theorem on both, I would get different values. So, okay, that was the long question. So let's try to finish up the shorter one here. <clears throat> so we got this rectangular garden that has a length of four X plus five and a width of 3x minus 1 inches. And it says, let's find the length and the width if the perimeter is 432 inches. <clears throat> now, we actually tried to help you because the original problem switched without saying it. But notice if this says inches, then we need to talk about inches. So if we were to add all this up, notice this is 7x plus 4, right? And, and so a lot of people are going to go, well, fine, these two things add up to 432. But that would be incorrect because the perimeter needs to go all the way around. And I only gave you two of the four sides so far. So I would want to double this and set it equal to 432. Or I could have taken this number right here and cut this perimeter in half. And, and both of those values would be true. I could either set it equal to a, a double size or going to go the other direction. So I'm going to go with this guy right here, 14x, let's see, 432 minus 8. We're looking at uh, 424. Divide by 14, and we got, oops, that's 424, right? I hope I did that right. Divided by 14. Oh, that's weird. I thought this number was nice. Hmm. Let's see, 7x plus 4. I got a 5 and a minus 1. Yeah, that's right. Weird. Okay. So X is 30.3. We'll say about 30.3. I remember this number being nice, but I guess it's not uh, unless we've made a little bit of a mistake. Let me double check something. But I think everything's right. That's 7X plus 4. Um, yeah. I think we're all right. Sorry, I'm kind of slowing down here a little bit, but 432. I've already doubled these things, and that's what I wanted. So let's do that one more time. 432 minus 8. And let's divide that by 14, because I doubled it. Yep. Okay, so that means we already know um, 
find the length and width of the planter. So let's see if we took that 30.3 and we and we uh 30.3 times three minus one would be a width of 89.9 and the length would be four times 30.3 plus five. And, and I could do a little bit nicer than this if I didn't round as much as I did, but I felt like that was probably a little closer to how you guys would structure that. And then our last little problem is here, finding uh, a little thing about similar triangles that I got a 30 foot pole here, casting a 12 foot shadow down here. And then a building that is 80 foot tall. Wait, find the height of the building that casts an 80 foot shadow. So what I don't know is uh, what this is, because I know the shadow. So I could say the height is to the shadow as the height is to the shadow. And again, the principle that I kept saying is we always want to reduce these fractions if we can. And I'm going to say 5 over 2 equals x over 80. And I noticed immediately that this is 40 times as big as that. So all I need to do is I can take the 5 and multiply it by 40, and I got a height of 200. It's a 200-foot tall building. Or if you wanted to, we could cross multiply and get that, and we're going to get the same answer either way we do it. So hopefully that's good. That's page number three. We'll see you back in class. Goodbye.